ATMs. You probably use them at least monthly, but have you ever wondered how they came to be? Who invented ATMs, and how did they grow to play such a pivotal role in modern society? The answer to that question is not that simple, as these money-dispensing machines don't have just one inventor. Rather, they are the end result of a bunch of inventions over time. Let's explore the long journey that brought us to today's much-needed ATMs. ATMs have been around since 1960, when American inventor Luther Simjian patented the first automated banking machine as the Bankograph. This device was impressive for its time, as it could automatically accept cash or checks at any time of the day. In 1960, Simjian was able to convince the then New York City Bank to take a few of his machines on a trial to see how they worked. They essentially functioned as follows. A user would submit their check or money, and a microfilm camera inside of the machine would take a snapshot of the deposit. Customers would then receive a copy of this photo as their receipt. Bankers would then come in and make the physical deposit during banking hours. Comically, while these machines may seem like an impressive convenience for 1960, apparently the only people who wanted to use them were prostitutes and gamblers who wanted an inconspicuous way to make deposits. While the Bankograph was the first iteration of a machine resembling an ATM, it didn't quite make the cut in its day, likely because people did not trust a machine with their money. It took until the end of the 1960s for people in the U.S. to become willing to use self-service banking. Meanwhile, in 1966, the first cash dispensing machine was installed in Japan, but it was tied to a credit account, not a bank account. The modern version of an ATM had not yet come to be. It was in 1965 that an inventor from Scotland named John Shepherd Barron had an ingenious idea while taking a bath. Vending machines for candy existed, so why not for cash? These first ATMs, or automated money dispensing machines, used paper vouchers with radioactive ink to withdraw cash in place of credit or debit cards. The most a user could withdraw at a time was 10 pounds. The machines proved attractive to London banks, who were struggling with union demands to end Saturday banking hours. While Londoners were busy getting acquainted with automated tellers, in the U.S., a Dallas, Texas-based engineer named Donald Wetzel had come up with his own ATM design. These machines were the first to use plastic cards with magnetic strips. In 1969, a bank in Long Island was the first to install one of these early machines. By the early 1970s, banks across the U.S. and London had signed up to have their own ATMs. These banks used massive advertising campaigns to get consumers to be comfortable with the new machines. However, it wasn't until 1977 when ATMs were fully integrated into modern society. Citibank invested 100 million U.S. dollars to install ATMs all across New York City. The following year, when a massive snowstorm shut down the city, ATM usage increased by 20% as all of the banks were closed. Citibank's successful investment proved that ATMs were here to stay. As of 2019, there were more than 3 million ATMs across the globe. Although their use is on the decline as more people use credit and debit cards for many transactions, still no one can deny how indispensable ATMs are in modern society. Although the use of ATMs purely for dispensing cash has decreased, there has been a rise in ATM-like machines for other purposes, such as airline ticketing and even dispensing cryptocurrencies and medicine. Now that we have looked at ATM's fascinating history, here are seven more interesting facts about these machines. The first ATMs used radioactive paper containing carbon-14 in place of cards. This is the same isotope of carbon that is used in carbon dating. 
After the first ATM was installed at a Barclays branch in London, the second was installed in Sweden. The first ATM heist was reportedly in 1968, when a Swedish thief discovered how to calculate PIN numbers for ATM cards. He reportedly traveled around the country, emptying the machines. In 1971, there were only 11 U.S. banks that had ATMs. Just 23 years later, there were more than 100,000 ATMs nationwide. Prior to 1996, ATMs in the U.S. were prohibited from charging for the transaction. After the law was changed that year, banks slowly started to implement ATM charges. At first, ATMs weren't connected to wireless networks. By 1999, nearly all of the world's ATMs were connected to shared networks. An Iowa-based grocery store named Dahl's Foods was the first grocer to install an ATM.